thank you, uh, Julien, for the uh, nice introduction and the possibility to uh, present our work on uh, bioaerogels for biomedical applications uh, today. It's uh, an honor to speak at an event uh, organized by such a pertinent and active association as uh, EPNOE. Um, so, first of all, uh, what are uh, aerogels? Um, aerogels are uh, dry, uh, highly porous and ultralight materials with a high internal uh, surface area. Um, they can be made by drying hydrogels uh, using supercritical CO2. Uh, other drying methods, uh, such as vacuum drying, uh, result in capillary tension in the uh, pores, uh, which is caused by the liquid surface tension at the uh, solid liquid vapor interface and the capillary stress is uh, strong enough to cause a high shrinkage in the uh, gel. Uh, but during supercritical drying of uh, wet gels, the fluid inside the pores is removed under supercritical conditions of the uh, CO2 uh, fluid mixture. And since there are no menisci uh, at any uh, liquid vapor interface uh, above the critical point, um, the capillary stresses are no longer acting and consequently uh, the network morphology of the wet gels uh, can remain intact with uh, minimal shrinkage. Uh, so aerogels were first described in 1931 by Stephen Kistler, who removed the liquid from uh, a silica gel via supercritical CO2 drying uh, to create a solid a porous material that kept its uh, 3D structure. In the following decades, uh, technological constraints uh, limited aerogel research, but in the 1970s, um, technological progress revived the field, leading to several developments, such as the use of uh, other elements, um, as well as synthetic polymers uh, for aerogels. Uh, thanks to their high porosity and high internal surface area, uh, aerogels were initially mainly applied as uh, insulation material, as a catalyst support, uh, or for the purification of gas streams, for example. Uh, in the 2000s, um, aerogels based on natural polymers started to be investigated in a systematic uh, manner. Uh, polysaccharides such as uh, cellulose, titosan, alginate, uh, pectin are abundant, biocompatible and uh, re uh, renewable. They are widely used in everyday products. And uh, aerogels based on uh, these polysaccharides were coined bioaerogels. Um, so bioaerogels can be made from uh, polysaccharides without any uh, crosslinker. Um, they're generally made via uh, polymer dissolution, uh, gelation, although this is not always uh, necessary. Solvent exchange from uh, water to a solvent that is miscible with uh, CO2, such as ethanol or acetone. Uh, and lastly, drying with uh, supercritical CO2 to keep the network morphology and the shape uh, of the aerogel precursor. Uh, when it comes to uh, biomedical applications, um, bioaerogels have a number of advantageous uh, properties. They're lightweight, so easy to uh, transport. Uh, they are dry networks, uh, which limits bacterial growth and preserves the uh, shape. Um, because bioaerogels are made via a number of steps, um, there are many possibilities to control their uh, properties. Uh, but uh, they may also present uh, advantages from a uh, functional point of view. For example, uh, their uh, high internal surface area may allow for a high drug loading. And in my presentation, I'll focus on two types of aerogels. Uh, let's start with uh, pectin aerogels for drug delivery. Um, pectin is a ramified uh, heteropolysaccharide uh, whose main component is uh, galacturonic uh, acid. Um, this repeating unit varies greatly um, regarding its degree and type of uh, substitution, uh, depending on the uh, pectin source. In this uh, study, low methoxyl pectin uh, from citrus fruit was uh, used. Uh, several uh, inter-chain uh, interactions uh, exist, which depend on the pectin characteristics uh, and the external uh, parameters. Uh, under certain conditions, uh, pectin can form hydrogels, uh, thanks to its acid functions. Below the uh, pKa of uh, about 3, the acid groups are protonated, uh, which minimizes electrostatic uh, repulsions, which in turn allows for uh, the formation of hydrogen bonds, uh, for example. 
Um, also, the addition of multivalent uh, ions, such as uh, calcium ions, can result in uh, network formation thanks to ionic uh, interchain uh, crosslinks between the uh, multivalent uh, cations and the deprotonated uh, acid groups. So before going to uh, drug release, um, I would like to present two slides about uh, processing structural properties, correlations of the uh, pectin and aerogels. Uh, this graph shows the density and the specific surface area of uh, pectin aerogels as a function of the uh, pH of the uh, starting pectin solution. This graph looks uh, rather complex, but I will guide you uh, through it uh, step by step. This was during a work done by uh, Sophie Gru, who was a PhD student in our group. At a low pH of the uh, starting solution, uh, a relatively strong gel uh, denoted by uh, G is obtained uh, thanks to minimization of the electrostatic uh, repulsions. And because of the strong network, the shrinkage, uh, which is due to solvent exchange and supercritical drying, uh, remains uh, low and therefore the density remains uh, low as well. Uh, with an increase in pH from 1 to uh, 3.5, ionization of the uh, pectin chains occurs, a decrease in their association, and gelation is inhibited. And because of the weak network, the shrinkage is uh, high, and the uh, density is therefore high as well. And the increase in density going from um, pH 1.5 to 3.7 is also apparent from the uh, SEM images. For example, the average pore size goes from 100 nanometers uh, here uh, at at pH 1.5 to 13 nanometers at pH 3.7. Uh, because the pore size decreases, going from uh, pH uh, 1.5 to 3.7, the specific surface area increases to high values of uh, 600 uh, square meters per uh, gram. Uh, lastly, uh, above a pH um, a value of approximately four. Um, complete ionization of the uh, pectin chains uh, leads to pectin solutions with a very low viscosity, which in turn leads to damaged uh, samples um, with a heterogeneous uh, morphology, a low density, and a low specific uh, surface area. Um, so the uh, aerogel properties uh, can be controlled by varying the state of the uh, sample prior to solvent exchange. If the state is uh, gel, uh, the pectin aerogel has a relatively low density and a low surface area. If it is a solution, uh, then it has a higher density and a higher uh, surface area. Um, so this graph shows the uh, density and the specific surface area as a function of the calcium content of the uh, pectin starting solution. As mentioned uh, previously, calcium uh, ions can induce um, network formation via interchain ionic crosslinks. And as a consequence, uh, the density of the aerogel strongly decreases uh, from uh, 0.1 gram per uh, cubic centimeter without calcium to half this uh, value for uh, R values above uh, 0.2. Uh, this is also reflected in the pore size, which increases from uh, 30 nanometers without calcium uh, to one, 150 nanometers here, uh, and also in a specific surface area, which decreases by 30% going from uh, zero calcium to a lot of calcium. So again, uh, the properties of the pectin aerogels can be controlled by the state of the sample before solvent exchange. Uh, following the establishment of uh, these uh, processing structure properties relations uh, for the pectin aerogels, we investigated the loading and the release of uh, the model drug uh, theophylline. Uh, theophylline was uh, loaded uh, by immersing the pectin alcohol alcohol gels uh, in an ethanolic uh, theophylline solution um, prior to the uh, supercritical uh, drying step. Uh, this graph uh, shows the loading efficiency as a function of uh, density. Uh, several different uh, symbols are uh, visible, uh, which correspond to different starting conditions of the pectin solutions. So uh, with, of, uh, with or without calcium and uh, three weight percent and six weight percent. I will not go into uh, the details regarding the uh, different sample groups. Uh, but the um, 
loading efficiency uh, varies between 40 and 80%, uh, percent, which is in accordance with uh, uh, literature values uh, reported for other aerogels. And the general clen uh, trend is also uh, clear. The loading efficiency increases with uh, density, and we believe that the explanation can be found in the uh, last uh, step, uh, the supercritical drying of the uh, drug-loaded uh, alcohol gels. The denser the network, the smaller the pores, and the higher the tertuosity, and the higher tertuosity, may better prevent uh, physical thiophilene washout during the uh, supercritical uh, drying step. Uh, so this graph shows uh, theophylline release uh, over time for aerogels uh, made from uh, pectin, which was dissolved at uh, 6 weight percent at pH 2 in the absence of uh, calcium. Release into um, simulated gastric fluid was monitored for one hour, uh, followed by release into simulated uh, intestinal fluid to mimic the conditions in the gastrointestinal uh, tract. Uh, as expected, um, free theophylline powder dissolved immediately uh, thanks to its uh, high solubility at uh, pH 1. Um, theophylline was released from the aerogels uh, in approximately 300 minutes. Uh, full theophylline release occurs uh, just before complete uh, matrix dissolution. Uh, during the first hour uh, in pH uh, 1, the network uh, remains intact as the acid groups are protonated, uh, resulting in abundant uh, physical uh, crosslinks. Therefore, theophylline is uh, mainly, mainly released by uh, diffusion uh, during this time. Uh, after one hour uh, in pH 6.1, uh, 6.8, the uh, network degrades as the uh, acid groups are deprotonated, resulting in repulsion between the uh, pectin chains. And therefore, theophylline is uh, released by a combination of uh, diffusion and matrix erosion uh, here. Um, this graph compares uh, theophylline release uh, from pectin aerogels and hydrogels made from the same uh, pectin starting solution. Uh, it can be seen that uh, the pectin hydrogel releases theophylline much faster than the uh, aerogel. And also here, a uh, full theophylline um, release occurs just before a complete matrix dissolution. The reason for this uh, different behavior is that the aerogel dissolves uh, much slower uh, thanks to its denser and network morphology. And this may sound counterintuitive, but uh, when such a weak hydrogel is dried supercritically to form an aerogel, it uh, contracts a lot and a denser network is less prone to erosion as the uh, solvent penetration is uh, slower due to the uh, smaller pores, the higher tertuosity and the thicker pore walls. Uh, we also looked at the influence of pH on the, uh, of the pectin starting solution on the release kinetics. Theophylline was uh, released uh, faster uh, from pectin aerogels that were prepared at a lower pH. And the reason is that at low pH, strong pectin gels are formed, uh, which uh, resist to network shrinkage, resulting in an open um, porous morphology and an open morphology facilitates water penetration in the system, increases uh, solvent and drug diffusivity, and promotes uh, matrix dissolution, uh, as also shown uh, here. Uh, pH 1.2 uh, dissolves uh, the uh, quickest. Um, all this results in a faster release compared to pectin aerogels prepared at the higher pH. So the pH of the starting uh, solution determines the state of the matter, uh, which in turn uh, determines the density and morphology, which directs uh, release kinetics. Uh, furthermore, we looked at the influence of calcium crosslinking on theophylline release. Theophylline, release, uh, theophylline is released uh, slower from uh, pectin uh, aerogels that are crosslinked with uh, Calcium, so over here. Uh, the reason is that the intermolecular ionic uh, crosslinks make the network more resistant to erosion, which is also apparent from uh, these pictures of the uh, samples taken after 180 minutes. So, uh, calcium crosslinking controls the matrix solubility, which directs the uh, release kinetics. So this uh, concludes the first part about uh, pectin aerogels for drug delivery. Uh, in the remainder of my presentation, I will talk about hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels for wound dressing applications.
Uh, hyaluronic acid is a highly polar, hydrophilic, anionic heteropolysaccharide, which is part of the uh, extracellular matrix in uh, animals. It's typically extracted from the uh, umbilical cord from uh, roosters or from certain bacteria. It has important uh, functions in the regeneration uh, of tissues, including the skin. Uh, for this reason, uh, hyaluronic acid has been used in uh, various forms uh, for wound dressings, including hydrogels and electrosperm membranes. Uh, despite uh, this research, there is still a need for a superior therapeutic uh, solution. Uh, so the ideal uh, wound dressing uh, should fulfill a number of demands. Uh, hyaluronic acid is uh, able to tick a number of these uh, boxes, but uh, to fulfill the other uh, demands, uh, which are more related to material uh, characteristics, aerogels are a promising uh, option. As a small uh, reminder, aerogels are dry, ultralight, and highly uh, porous uh, ultralight materials so with a high internal surface area. And because of these unique properties, uh, aerogels potentially allow for uh, O2 and CO2 exchange, the absorption of a high amount of uh, wound exudate, and the controlled release of uh, therapeutic agents, which are useful in the uh, wound healing process. So taken together, uh, hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels uh, have great potential as uh, wound dressings. Um, so 100% uh, hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels had not been uh, reported uh, yet, so the whole sequence of preparation steps uh, needed to be uh, developed and new materials needed to be uh, fully characterized. Um, this is something uh, that our postdoc, uh, Dr. Daniel Aguilera, performed in 2021. Uh, now, Lariam Legay, a PhD student who is working on my AMR Young Research Grant, is uh, taking over to push this uh, research towards uh, wound dressing applications. So, um, Daniel uh, developed the following methodology uh, for the preparation of hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels. Uh, the polymer was dissolved in water, followed by adjustment of the pH to one of these uh, values. Uh, the resulting viscous solution was then transferred to a mold, followed by the addition uh, of uh, either acetone or ethanol, as these organic solvents are non-solvents for the uh, polymer. This resulted in a non-solvent induced uh, phase separation and coagulation. After several washing steps with organic uh, solvent, the resulting alcohol gels were then uh, dried supercritically with uh, uh, CO2. And the materials were then uh, characterized in terms of uh, density, specific surface area, and uh, network morphology. Uh, these are pictures of the materials with here a side view and here a top view. It can be seen that the pH of the uh, starting solution considerably affects the properties of the uh, obtained materials. Um, these are pictures. Uh, uh, these materials are prepared at uh, pH 1.5, pH 6, or pH 12 have uh, distorted uh, shapes, uh, high densities, and low specific surface areas. And this indicates that the high shrinkage uh, occurred uh, during the salt exchange and the supercritical uh, drying steps. And we believe that this is due to uh, degradation of the uh, polymer chains in these cases of uh, rather extreme pH at uh, pH 1.5 and pH 12. For the case of uh, pH 6, we think that uh, it is due to a lack of interactions between the chains, so only very weak uh, networks are formed uh, at these pH values, resulting in uh, dense materials. Uh, only at uh, pH 2.5, materials were obtained with low density, high porosity, and high specific surface area, uh, which uh, more or less uh, kept their shape, uh, discs in this uh, case. Uh, pH 2.5 corresponds to the isoelectric point of uh, hyaluronic acid, resulting in a high viscosity of the solution, which is uh, indicative of uh, strong network formation. Therefore, the material resists to a shrinkage during processing, resulting in aerogels. Um, so this table uh, summarizes some results obtained for aerogels, um, so materials prepared from uh, hyaluronic acid solutions uh, with a pH of 2.5. A higher uh, starting uh, concentration of the polymer results in a higher uh, density, as may have been uh, expected. Also changing non-solvent from um, 
ethanol to acetone results in uh, higher density, probably because of the lower affinity of uh, hyaluronic acid with uh, acetone. Uh, this results in a harsher coagulation and a denser network. And the specific surface area is pretty uh, high and uh, relatively uh, constant. The lower density of uh, this sample uh, compared to uh, this sample also follows from the uh, SEM uh, pictures. Uh, the aerogels have uh, major pores and small micropores of uh, 20 to uh, 100 uh, nanometers. Uh, so, previous aerogels were prepared using a non solvent induced uh, phase separation for hydrogel formation. Uh, Laureana developed uh, an alternative approach using freeze thaw induced uh, gelation to prepare hyaluronic uh, acids. Uh, Hydrogel. So solutions were frozen for 24 hours and then thawed, and this cycle was performed one or three times uh, following a solvent exchange and supercritical uh, drying. Uh, this also led to uh, hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels with different properties compared to the uh, aerogels I showed uh, before. Also here, an important uh, influence of the uh, pH of the uh, initial uh, Solutions was observed with a pH of 1.5, the uh, porosity is uh, low, the density is uh, high, and the specific surface area is uh, close to zero. At pH 2.5, on the other hand, the porosity is higher, the density is uh, lower, and the specific surface area reaches a high value of uh, 500 meters, uh, uh, square meters per, uh, per gram. Okay, um, that brings me uh, to the last part of uh, my presentation. Uh, this concludes the scientific part. Before going to a summary slide, I would like to say just a few words about the institution where I currently work. Uh, CEMEF is a part of uh, Mine Paris, also, as the, also known as the uh, Ecole Nationale Supérieure de Mines de Paris, um, which is one of the uh, most prestigious and oldest engineering schools in uh, France. It contains uh, 18 research centers with uh, headquarters, obviously, in uh, Paris. Uh, five research centers are located in uh, Sofia Antipolis uh, here in the south, including uh, CEMEF. Um, CEMEF stands for uh, Center for Materials Forming. Uh, its objectives are to perform excellent research in close collaboration with the industry and to educate uh, students uh, via research. Um, approximately 150 people are working in CEMEF and its uh, research activities uh, focus on four different uh, domains, um, including uh, polymers. There are two research works, uh, two research groups working on uh, polymers uh, in CEMEF, including uh, the group Bio-Based uh, Polymers and Composites, uh, where I'm uh, part of. Um, this group, we are four permanent uh, staff members with Tatjana Bitova as the uh, group leader. Uh, leader. Uh, our uh, goal is to advance the fundamental knowledge on the uh, structures and uh, properties of polymers to develop uh, innovative functional materials. We focus on very diverse topics uh, with uh, polymer chemical physics uh, as a recurring uh, theme. And I tend to focus on uh, biomedical uh, applications uh, based on bio-based polymers, aerogels, and uh, hydrogels. So um, that brings me to uh, the conclusion. Uh, because of their unique uh, properties, aerogels, and in particular bioaerogels, are attractive materials for biomedical applications. Uh, the chemical composition of pectin allows for various mechanisms of uh, network formation um, via pH or uh, calcium addition. Uh, they play a crucial role in determining the uh, aerogel properties. For example, the release kinetics could be controlled via the pH and the presence of uh, calcium in the initial pectin solution. Uh, we also saw that uh, pectin aerogels can exhibit uh, a different release behavior compared to pectin uh, hydrogels prepared from the uh, same uh, precursor. I also highlighted a uh, newly developed uh, hyaluronic acid uh, aerogels, which will promise as uh, wound dressings. pH control is uh, again crucial in view of uh, network formation and various properties can be tuned via the normal solvent type and the initial uh, polymer concentration. Uh, currently, further biomedical characterizations are uh, underway. Um, so I would like to uh, thank these people for uh, their valuable uh, help, uh, Cargill for providing pectin. Uh, funding came from my uh, ANR Young Researcher Grant, 3D, 3D Aerial, as well as the ANR uh, Oliblock uh, project. Again, uh, thanks to uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to uh, share our work on uh, bioaerogels uh, today. And I would like to uh, thank you for your kind uh, attention.